Morning edit. It is not Molly Myers Labady in the studio this morning. It is Jaden McDaniel Browning. Good morning. Good morning. Molly is um, going to be on several different like vacations, meetings, things that I guess she's just got to do as the deputy director for <laughs> the month of July. And so Jaina is going to be with us not today only, not next week only, but for the next three weeks. Yes, I will. I will be right here. <laughs> How so lucky. excited. How lucky are we? <laughs> we, we are. It's we beautiful. have the most fun. Yeah. Yeah, we do. We yeah. do. It's, I mean, ah, it's going to be hard. You're going to have to pick up some of that energy that Molly brings. <laughs> we'll see if you can, you know, talk about some weird places you've been or talk about your mother. Or <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we're not going to do that. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, we also have in the studio with us this morning, Philip Hutchison. He is with the Ohio Department of Natural Resources. And his current title is a Historic Programs Administrator, but we'll get to the tease why he's here. We've got some cool partnerships coming up. Um, Well, we've done one already, and then three more coming up the rest of this summer between the library and the Delaware State Park, the Alum Creek State Park. And this is happening all over the state this summer. So good morning, Philip. Good morning. It's really nice to have you here, and uh, we'll talk all about that really cool relationship the second half of the show. But As we always begin on the first half of the show, we like to talk about what we're reading. What would be what what kind of library show would we be if we didn't talk about something we've read? No library show at all. (laughs) A shameful, a shameful, (laughs) terrible library show. What are they doing there? (laughs) Why don't they read? They're librarians. Right. (laughs) So what do you have for us, Jaina? I am Jeff Zentner Palooza right now Mm -hmm. because, of course, we have Jeff coming in tomorrow. Tomorrow. Super excited to see him. Yes. Um, Listen to him, meet him, all of the above, get my book signed. Um, And right now I'm I'm in the middle of uh, one of his more recent books, In the Wild Light, um, which is fantastic. But I'm going to talk about the book that I have finished by him. Oh, good. Um, So just finished it at the end of last week, Rain and Delilah's Midnight Matinee. And uh, it is just delightful. I had such a good time with this book. So it's it's about these two girls, Rain Ravenscroft and Delilah Darkwood. And they are known in real life as Josie and Delilah. I was going to say, that can't be their real names. They are not their real names. <laughs> Those are their showbiz names. Yes, okay. um, but they are best friends and hosts of their public access channel's late night show, Midnight Matinee. Um, which features corny, low-budget horror movies bracketed by banter and skits. Um, And for Delia, the show is her heart and soul. Mm -hmm. And it resurrects the old movies that she shared with her father, who left when she was just a little girl. Mm. Um, And she hopes that it will be successful enough to lift her out of her impoverished situation. Um, And she's living with her single mother, who has depression issues. So that's been a struggle as well. Um, Her best friend, Josie, however, um, has a solid home life, and her parents really want her to go to college. They have landed her an internship with the Food Channel um, because she does want to go into TV. Um, But she's not really sure if she wants to stay with her best friend, Delia, who she knows really needs her, um, or if she wants to go on and and take this shot. And then further complications ensue when handsome, nice guy Lawson plays a, an extra in a skit on the show. Lawson. And sparks are flying between Josie and, and Lawson. Yeah, Lawson, he's all that in a bag of chips, I'm telling you. <laughs> I bet um, he has a really good side part. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, he's an MMA fire, fighter, oh, too. So he's got, yeah. I bet he's got short hair. I think he does. Mm-hmm. Um but the, the trio decide to go down to ShiverCon in Orlando, Florida, um, which is like a Comic-Con, but yeah. for horror. Yeah. And horror legend Jack Devine is going to be there. He's agreed to take a meeting with them. And so they decide that if they can get him on board to help them lift their show to the next level, then Josie will stay, not move away. And I'm going to leave it there. I don't want any oh, I spoilers. Love it. Yes. But uh, but yeah, Jeff, you know, writes to to young adults. Mm-hmm. But I I am you know definitely an adult, and I, <laughs> I really love this. Um, the main characters are really smart. They're likable, and and they're very they're written really realistically. Like mm-hmm. I I could see teenagers feeling this way and saying this way. Um, and it's alternating chapters, right? It's Josie it is, and yeah. Delia. So jo- it's from Josie's point of view, one chapter, and then Delia's the next. Mm-hmm. So you you really get what both of them are are feeling and thinking. And nice. It's yeah, it's a wonderful book. Highly recommended. So you know, there, it doesn't flinch away from the hard issues like mental illness, substance abuse, mm-hmm. things like that. Um, 
But it's also just kind-hearted and warm and and wonderful. Yeah. So that, all the feels. That's how I feel about most of Jeff's books. And we are so excited. Uh, again, this is a plug. If you have not reserved your ticket, um, Jeff Zentner will be at the Liberty Branch Library tomorrow, Saturday, July 8th at 2 o'clock p.m. It's a free ticket. Um, carpool, come with your friends and uh, come down to the community rooms A and B and check them out. It's going to mm-hmm. be so much fun. Yeah. What are you reading? Well, well we're going to go to Philip first. All right. Yeah. Philip, tell us. You're, you're up, Philip. Also, I know. It's a little hard to follow. You were you were prepped and ready. It's okay. It's just, you know. Like... I was just really excited. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I love to read. Um, I read a lot of fantasy, a lot of science fiction. But uh, I, I brought today a, a book I've been reading for, for work for some some research. It's, uh, it's nonfiction. Um, it's called Nature's New Deal by Neil Mayer. Um, so it tracks the history and the cultural uh, impact of the Civilian Conservation Corps from the, the 1930s, from the oh, New Deal. Oh, yeah. Um, and, you know, our, our state parks and forests have a lot of work that was done in them by the Civilian Conservation Corps. A lot of trees planted, buildings built, lots of our um, structures, the uh, shelter houses and lodges and cabins were built by this program. But what's, what's really interesting about the book for me is that it uh, really talks about how it has affected our entire cultural sense of conservation, environmentalism, um, and, and how it has impacted the way we think about those things today and how it, it kind of changed the movement in, in America because it, it brought all these young people that had no real understanding. They may have done farm work in the past or they may have been from the city, but had no real understanding of like actual stewardship or conservation practices. And they spent all their time working on these these projects, learning about soil erosion, forestry and firefighting. And and we came out of this era with millions of people who had been trained as conservation workers, mm-hmm. like frontline conservation workers. And it really changed the way America handled its its natural resources. And as a employee at ODNR, you know, like our mission statement is balancing the wise use of of our natural resources with uh, protecting them and and conservation and doing that to to benefit everyone in the in the state and the country that comes and visits all of our our beautiful state parks and forests and natural areas. And so this really, um, really connects with that mission for me. And and it's it's been a great resource for some of the work I'm, I'm doing moving forward. So you know, anyone who's interested in just general U.S. history, the New Deal, mm-hmm. uh, uh, the Civilian Conservation Corps in general, or the the history of environmentalism and conservation thought in America, I would I would strongly recommend that it's a, book. It's a different angle than what you would expect for a book about the New Deal. That's not the direction that you necessarily would think it would go, but it was very significant. Yeah, yeah, it, it, yeah. it definitely, definitely uh change the way we approach a, a lot of things, not just conservation. But Wonderful. All right. That was The Nature's New Deal by Neil Ma- Maher? Mayer? Yes. M-A-H-E-R. However you want to pronounce that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have just started. I, ju- I kind of am right in my in-between where I just finished a book and I was very happy to finish one that I've been working on for a while and I just picked up a new one. This is a plug for the Libby app. If you use um, Libby through the library and you have your library card synced with it um, and you're just, you know, trying to find something that's available. um, If you look up at the top, whenever you go to search, there will be different modifiers. Like, are you looking for available now? Are you looking for an ebook or an audio book? Or are you looking for something that uh, is your lucky day? And there will be a little four leaf clover. And if you tap on that, Um, These are select books that have been released just for the moment. You know, they they hold them, um, you know, off to the side. They're very popular. There's usually a wait time, usually a many months long wait time. And um, but because it's your lucky day, it's available right here, right now for you. And so I um, downloaded Friends, Lovers and the Big Terrible Thing by Matthew Perry. This is Matthew Perry's um, story, uh, his his autobiography. Um, it's a memoir and written by Matthew Perry. I'm listening to the audiobook. He does narrate the audiobook as well. It's a very quick audiobook. It's only going to be about eight hours or so. And um, it's really, you know, he, he is beloved. You know him from Friends. You know him um, maybe by, was he Chandler? I'm the worst. I wasn't a Friends Yes, watcher. he was, he was Chandler. Chandler. <laughs> I was like, was he Chandler? I'm so sorry. Please don't crucify me. <laughs> um, so you're going to know him from, from Friends as Chandler. Um, but really the story is, is that he 
he has had quite a journey in his in his lifetime. Even in the, in the prologue, he's like, yeah, I dated Julia Roberts. Yeah, at one point I was making a million dollars a week. I had a sprawling Hollywood Hills home that could overlook the entire city. You know, that seems like all the epitome of success. Um, but unfortunately, in Matt and Maddie, as his friends call him, in his uh, case, it was also riddled with addiction. And um, specifically, alcoholism is something that he battled. Um, you know, he's like at 24 living in a rehab facility. Yeah, sure, whatever. But he's like at 49. People are kind of over it by that point. And he said, and it's one of those things that he's like, when you're 49 and you're in the rehab facility, uh, you know more than the drug counselors do, and you know more than the people there, and you've lived it for your entire life, and you just want to get better. And so this is really um, his his story. He he throws in some funny anecdotes. He throws in some behind the scenes that you um, would want to know. And um, but then he also he he gets real. He's not afraid to tell the story. Um, so. I highly recommend if you if you're a friend uh, if you're a friend ha, if you're a fan of friends or if you have you know interest in Matthew Perry as an actor um, or just if you have if you maybe know someone who lives with alcoholism or you know someone who lives with addiction um, this might be a really good piece for you to read for you to have some understanding of you know they are working to get out of it just as hard as you want them to get out of it. Um, so I, I would recommend Friends, Lovers, and the Big Terrible Thing by Matthew Perry. That and sounds I interesting. I, I would read or listen to that. Yeah. It, it's interesting. His voice has changed. Um, he does not have the the punchy, um, crisp sounding words that he had when he was a 25-year-old or 30-year-old on Friends. Um, his voice sounds a little bit deeper, a little bit slower, um, and a little bit more garbled. And I think that that is... Um, probably because of the life that he's lived and where he is now. We haven't right. really seen him acting in recent years, and uh, so we haven't heard his voice. Um, and so it was interesting. When I started the audiobook, I was like, oh, you do? He sounds a little bit different. He sounds a little bit wow. um, changed. So, yeah. Well, with that, we are going to take a break, and on the second half of the show, we'll come back with Philip Hutchison from Ohio Department of Natural Resources talking about some very fun programs we have coming up in partnership um, later on this summer. So stay tuned. A uh, perfect day for Zoom Busy Bay. It will be a perfect day for Zoom Busy Bay for you. I know. We'll see, unlike Molly, who, <laughs> as you hear, that is not Molly, my co host, that is Jada McDaniel Browning. Hello, Hello. Jana. Thank Hello. you for being my co host today. My pleasure. But unlike Molly, I have plans, but I come and do radio first, and then I go and do my plans. You take care of business. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that was Gage's voice you heard giving us the weather. Hello, Gage. Hello. Welcome back. And, of course, today with us we have Philip Hutchison, Ohio Department of Natural Resources. His current title is Historic Programs Administrator. But we met earlier this spring when you were the program coordinator for the Division of Parks and Watercraft. And tell us a little bit about why you're here today. What's happening with libraries and the state parks? So um, er earlier this, uh, well, late last year, earlier this year, we, we initiated a, a new program that we're calling Storytime in the Parks, where uh, we, we worked with the State Library of Ohio. And it's just a pilot year. So we've got, I think, um, nine library systems and 11 parks, I believe, involved in this first year and over 30 events. But we, we wanted to, you know, libraries and state parks, if, if you're a parent, you know, like two of the best options for getting your kids Free, great programming right. are yep. our state parks and our libraries. Let's get out and, of the house yeah. and go do something free. Yeah. <laughs> Where are we going to go? <laughs> and, and I'm sure the librarians would like to get out into the parks sometimes, right? So, yeah. oh, yes. so we, we brought the we, we decided to bring those two things together and, and pair some of the, the wonderful naturalist programming that mm -hmm. we have going on in our state parks with with literacy programming and with the the libraries and reading and the spe specifically the the story time type. Mm -hmm. uh, programs that you guys do. And uh, this was also something that was um, thought of along with the, the governor's literacy challenge mm -hmm. um, to, to kind of coordinate a little bit with that uh, and help bring some of that background knowledge that helps uh, kids and, and adults contextualize the things that they read and really get the most out of what they're reading and, and then go put it into hands-on 
hands-on use. So we've got these things going on all over the state, and some of the some of the great ones I, I know are going on at Alum Creek and Delaware State Parks right here in Delaware County. That's right. You mentioned that there are 30 programs happening, and four of them are coming from a partnership between the Delaware County District Library System and the great state parks that we have here in Delaware County, which we have two. We have Alum Creek State Park and we have Delaware State Park. I learned a fun fact when I was part of, I believe, Leadership Delaware that surprisingly, the county of Delaware has more waterfront property than even, you know, someone who lives up on Lake Erie just because we have so many um, so many lakes, so many mm-hmm. rivers, so many streams and ponds and things like that that mm-hmm. are just peppered throughout this county. So we have wonderful natural resources. Um, we've already had one program happen that, Philip, you and your family got to attend. Yes, absolutely. You want to talk a little bit about what happened at that program? Um, so uh, the one of the early programs in the in the entire initiative was at Delaware State Park, and it was a, uh, a creaking program from the naturalist paired with the, the library coming it's actually the biggest one as far as I, I don't have a tend to statistics for everyone that's happened, but I think it's the biggest uh, story time in the parks event that we've had so far. We had around Woo-hoo. around that's 30 <laughs> around thirty kids there. I think yeah. 52 total people with the with the adults. And Delaware shows up. Yeah, they, they all went down to the... <laughs> yeah, well, no, it was, creaking, it was great. You know? I mean, it's creaky. Right, right. Right. <laughs> Who doesn't want to get in the creek, right? Yeah. Figure out what, what like, well, macroinvertebrates and stuff you got Ooh. living in there. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we all took a walk down to the creek, got in with the with the nets. There was naturalist there from uh, Delaware Parks, and there was a naturalist there from uh, the U.S. Uh, Corps, the Army Corps of Engineers, oh, right. that yes. also is is very active at, at Delaware State Park and Allen Creek, both are yeah. Army Corps sites. Um, and they had one of their volunteer naturalists there, and and they they did great. And we had s'mores afterwards. Yes. And the librarian was there passing things out, and I think there were more people than anyone was really expecting. <laughs> I think it was, it was maybe a little more chaotic than, than we than we were hoping, but it it was great. Everyone was having fun, and and I I loved the partnership. I know my my kids loved it. We so. live for the chaos at the library. Yeah, <laughs> you wouldn't think we do, but we truly do. You um, s'mores is an ongoing theme. Um, getting wet, getting dirty, getting like in it with nature is an ongoing theme. Um, one of our upcoming programs, Jana, you had a question about because it uses a, a term that we haven't really heard before, but you said it's growing in popularity. I, I've heard it elsewhere, but yeah, I, I think it is growing in popularity. And the, the title of the program is Wildness Stories and S'mores. And we both thought it was a, a typo initially. We thought it should be wilderness, but no, it's supposed to be wildness. So we, we were talking a little bit about wildness. Ta- yeah. Tell us a little bit more about your take on that, so Philip. We, we were talking a little in the break about this, and I, I said then that you've got the wrong person from ODNR in the room <laughs> to really, really give you the background here. That if I could pull in a naturalist or someone from the, the Division of Natural Areas and Preserves, I'm sure they could tell you all about why we're using that term. But um, I, I thought maybe it was... You know, wilderness, we associate either with, with vast landscapes, I think, or with, with just forests in general. And maybe it's a way to try to bring that term back to other other things, to the, the wildlife, to the, the streams and rivers and lakes and, and um, you know, your, your specific area that you're in and to, to really – broaden it out while also maybe narrowing down the yeah. the area that you're referring to but again that's that's definitely i i am just uh yes, I think making about, that up off the top of my head i think so. about children too like you know there was a movement of like embracing wild children yeah and yeah. that kind of makes me think of it too that mm-hmm. you know bring your children out and embrace the wildness you know it goes back to the chaos exactly are, th- are there children lightly contained wild? chaos <laughs> <laughs> not that i know <laughs> not in my household certainly yeah, yeah, not mine either <laughs> well that wildness uh, stories and s'mores is taking place at delaware state park it is recommended for tweens and teens tweens are ages 9 to 11 and teens are 12 and up um, so come on up and um, see this program. And um, that one is going to be on Tuesday, July 11th at 630. Then we've got another one next week on July 13th, Thursday. That one takes place at 530. And that one's at Alum Creek State Park. They're going to do a pond study for kids ages 6 to 12. So this is another one you're going to want to dress for the mess. Um, you know, might get a little wet, bring a change of clothes, maybe some towels, <laughs> wear your Crocs because <laughs> <Yep. laughs> you're going to see what kind of things are in the pond. And then so those two are both coming up next week, Tuesday and Thursday in the evening. And then we take a little break for a couple weeks. And then Thursday, August 10th will be our final one of the summer. And we're going to meet Ohio reptiles at Alum Creek State Park. 
Um, this is at the Alum Creek, Camp, Alum Creek Campground, and uh, it's for kids ages 6 to 12. And this one is at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, we're going to have, like, snakes and box turtles and other Ohio reptiles. I mean, what sorts of things can you find in Ohio nature with reptiles? I mean, I mean we've, we've got a lot of snakes in Ohio, more than, more than people realize. Uh, and, and, and most of them are very friendly. I mean, the Lake Erie water snakes are grumpy. Copperheads are kind of grumpy. But okay. most, most of our snakes are pretty friendly. And, and we've got some – our naturalists uh, have, have some, some really great animals to bring out. And, and yeah, you mentioned box turtles. Uh, you might see a snapping turtle at oh. some of our state parks. Mm-hmm. We've got a lot of um, – Skinks and salamanders and and more more aquatic more aquatic little <laughs> reptiles and amphibians. Um, but a, a lot of a lot of our reptile programs, I, I think the the focus is often with with the snakes. The snakes mm-hmm. are the star of the show. Yeah. They're they're maybe a little more social. The, the rat snakes and the the milk yeah. snakes, corn snakes, more, a little more social animals than some of the other reptiles. And mm-hmm. A little easier mm-hmm. to to handle and to bring out and, and bring around people and. I think what some of these programs help teach is that you need to have a healthy respect of nature, you need to have a healthy love of nature, and you probably need to have a healthy fear of nature, you know? Just, like, know what can kill you, know <laughs> what you probably shouldn't touch, and but also know what what it does for our ecosystem. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Luckily in Ohio, we don't have too many things that can kill you. I, I would stay away from the copperheads. <laughs> yeah. if, you, if you meet a rattlesnake, you know, give it its space. But, right. but most of our animals in Ohio are... Uh, are definitely more scared of us than, than we need to be of them. Right. Is, I, I'm enjoying your description of snakes as being friendly. I've, I've never really yeah. thought of them as, as friendly creatures. A, a lot of them, once they're socialized, <clears throat> uh, you know, once they're they're socialized to people a little bit, can be very outgoing animals like, like the rat snakes and the corn snakes and milk snakes, mm-hmm. I think, are especially well known for uh, dealing well with people, so <laughs> it's like a dog. Like, <laughs> like, like, do they know? Do they smell the food coming? Or <laughs> are they feral? Or are they socialized? <laughs> <laughs> that is fun. Well, this this these programs are so much fun. Um, we're so happy to be part of the pilot program that really mm-hmm. introduced this to the state of Ohio, and um, I hope it continues next summer. I hope it continues, you know, even even in the off uh, times of the year of the summer. But this has been a lot of fun, and we're so happy that you could come by in studio today. Thank you so much for having me. This is this is great. It's always nice to get out and talk about some of the work we're doing. So. Absolutely, we've got just about a minute left to talk about some of the other things we have coming up at the library this week. We've already plugged Jeff Zef- Jeff Zentner coming tomorrow. To the mm-hmm. Liberty Branch Library. What else do we have, Jaina? Um, we all, we have another naturalist program this time with Preservation Parks. Oh, that's right. Um, and that is at Orange Branch Library, two o'clock on Monday, July tenth. And they're going to be learning some more about animals similar to to what we just talked about mm-hmm. that they might find in their own backyards. Oh, fun! Some 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 critters. Yeah, indeed. Um, so we have that. We, we do have some adult programming coming up. We've got uh, Medicare classes with SourcePoint mm-hmm. for our seniors. Um, Medicare can be so confusing. Wednesday, July 12th, um, 10 a.m. at Ostrander this time. I think we kick off a new series. We've got you'll learn a little mm-hmm. bit about Part A, Part B, and then getting it all put together. Right. And then a relatively new one as well. <clears throat> Pardon me. I've got a frog in my throat. One, one of our <laughs> one backyard of your amphibians. animals. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, falls free zone, fall prevention, also with source point again. Yes. Um, and that's a that's a really good one for our aging adults to make sure that you don't have trip and fall uh, hazards. Yes. Yes. In your home to well, stay safe and healthy. Lots of wonderful partnerships. One of the things that I believe libraries do best in the world is partner with other people who are experts in their field. So Indeed. come on out to the library. Uh, visit us, DelawareLibrary.org, to see some of the upcoming programs. In case you missed it, download the app. And thank you so much for being our guest today, Philip. Jaina, thank you for being my co-host. My pleasure, and always. Gage, we're so happy to always have you on the board. Thank you to our sponsors. And until next week, we will see you in the stacks.